Okay, I'm here with Mark Shuttleworth. Mark, how are you enjoying EDOS so far? Oh, it's fantastic. Day, uh, what are we, day two? Day three. Day three. And uh, it's uh, grooving along nicely. What do you think you're getting out of it? Uh, so for me, it's an opportunity to catch up with an amazing community and team and uh, to see people from you know, all over the world that I only get to see at Distro Summits and uh, that span a whole bunch of different areas of technology and community. Um, so I really enjoy the social side of it. And then it's also a, sort of a window onto the future, right? We're, we're charting out the course of the next six months. We, we're, we're firming up on the commitments that we'll make to the Intrepid IBEX. And so we, we're deciding now what's going to ship in, uh, in October 2008. And what do you think that's going to be? How's IBEX looking from what you've seen so far? So this is the beginning of, a, of another LTS cycle for us. So we, we have a lot more freedom and flexibility to shake things up. Um, so people are, people are, there's a certain amount of pent up passion after Hardy, which is an LTS release and so a little bit c constrained. Um, there's a certain amount of pent up desire to go and chase the, the, the new and the exciting. Um, uh, we have a bunch of different tracks here now from the server all the way through to mobile. Um, there seems to be a lot of really good work coming down the pipe from upstreams um, in X, for example, which is making new things possible. Um, new ways of accelerating video drivers, new ways of, of managing the interaction, the sort of dynamic interaction with the hardware. So I'm quite excited about that. We, we need to, to, um, to give people the sense that they're running on a really slick um, operating system. There's a real desire to make the what we call the netbook use case fly. So Ubuntu and other Linux versions have traditionally been focused on the sort of power developer sort of desktop workstation environment but increasingly we're seeing people shipping Linux on really small devices um, and so we'll make a lot of um, directional changes in the UI which keep it productive on a big workstation screen but which also make it productive on a very small screen and um, not quite the mobile not like something you could go in your pocket but still just something that's ultra portable like a really little laptop um, so that's a big driver of change. Um, and then the, the increasing use of Ubuntu in a corporate environment is a big driver of change. People want to be able to sign into Windows networks. They want to be able to you know, sign into um, large institutional networks where their credentials are being managed in a directory and, and have all of that just, just work in a very slick kind of way. Um, so it's great that we've got guys here from the Samba team. It's great that we've got guys here from a couple of different directory and, and other kinds of communities who, who know how all of these pieces need to fit together and can give us guidance. Um, so. They're quite diverse disciplines. I mean, small form laptops, you've only got to look around and hundreds of developers have got these tiny little things in their hands and they're, they're tapping away on them. Um, but also the corporate side of things and the mobile devices, lots of talk about the Ubuntu mobile here. Um, is Ubuntu at risk of getting overstretching itself, do you think? Yeah, that's a real, that's a real risk. Um, a couple of key things, though. The, the first is that the, the core teams, the core sort of desktop-focused team, hasn't been too shaken up by the addition of server and the addition of mobile. You know, guys who've come to Ubuntu to focus on the desktop continue to focus on the desktop. Um, and to a certain extent, they, they benefit from some of the infrastructure that gets put in place for, you know, to, to meet the server use case. Like a, a lot of the Windows networking stuff, for example, you know, really only is happening now on the desktop because it was an imperative on the server. Um, a lot of the, the kind of hardening, sec security hardening capabilities are really being driven by the, the server mandate, but desktop people will benefit. You know, Ubuntu will become more secure as a desktop platform um, as a result of that. And you know, as a personal user, all of your personal data is on your personal computer, so, so that's, a, that's a real win. Um, there, is, there is congestion at the very top, right? That the, 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 the leaders of the project have to task switch and try and, and balance between those things. But in principle, I think it's, it's, it's an extraordinary, it's an ambitious um, um, mandate to say let's create a platform which scales from the mobile all the way up to the server but at the same time that's what people instinctively want they want something which you know allows them to develop in one environment and deploy in another environment and not have to have too much friction between those there are quite a few people here as you're saying from other projects outside of uh, ubuntu from the samba project and from other distributions yeah um, it seems as if inter distro collaboration uh, is on the up well, it's a big theme. It's 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 a 
both philosophically and practically, it's something that I very much want to want to see more of and have put resources into and try to articulate a, both a vision for it and a rationale for it. You know, I think um, I think uh, we we um, the distros play a very important role in the overall ecosystem. It's not as important as as some people think. You know, the real innovation gets done in the upstreams, and so a really good distro is a, is effectively just an efficient conduit for that work from upstreams to to to, to their users. Um, and uh, I know that a lot of the Ubuntu developers enjoy collaborating with with other distros, um, but there are often sort of practical obstacles to that, as well as sometimes ideological obstacles and corporate obstacles. So a, a big theme for me over the next year is trying to break down some of those obstacles and find ways to let developers collaborate. Um, a key idea that I'm that I'm sort of championing is the idea of coordinating some of the freeze processes, some of the decision making as to which versions distros are going to ship. And I, I don't think that it's a good idea to have everybody binary compatible because that, that's, that's putting people into too tight a box. Um, and I don't think that it's necessarily even a bad idea to discourage people to make different decisions as to major components and versions. But I do think that, um, that a, lot of, um, a lot of barriers to collaboration arise really accidentally because we don't think about consciously about whether or not there's a, a need to do something different or whether you know, different decisions get made just because no one's thinking about them. So for example, if we can articulate that we really want to, 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 to start freezing kernel X, open office and so on around about a certain time and other distros are likely to be freezing at roughly the same time, then let's, let's agree on broad versions so that if we find a patch that makes you know, a particular printer work, another distro is more likely to be able to use that patch immediately as opposed to having to forward port it or back port it to whichever version they're, they're on. Um, the same is true for, so it's true for hardware enablement, it's true for application patches, it's true for a large number of different things. Um, I don't think distributions succeed by competing on having the latest of everything so much as succeed by giving people a great experience. And we all give people a better experience if we're able to collaborate more efficiently. So to me it makes sense to, to do that. That's something that we've perhaps feel more strongly than other distributions because we've always tried to collaborate with Debian. Um, so it's not unnatural for us also to want to collaborate with other with other distros. So I'm delighted that we have guys here from Sousa, from Fedora, and and hopefully there'll be a natural sort of spontaneous spontaneous desire to see these things work more efficiently. Well, we've already heard from the Kubuntu and Zubuntu guys about syncing their release in with the release of the upstream desktop yeah. environment, um, and you sort of blogged recently about uh, trying to get dis uh, distributions to release in sync with each other. Um, how realistic is it? Do you think that, that it ever really would happen? Well, it's turned into a very interesting sort of conversation. Um, and one of the, probably the best counter ideas that people have put back at me is this idea of freezing in sync rather than releasing in sync. And I quite like that, actually, because it suggests that, you know, it focuses on the collaboration element. Um, um, you know, if we work up a patch to make Firefox perform better, you know, with a particular version of GNOME, it makes sense for other distros to be able to benefit from that, and it's much easier for them to do so if they're also shipping a similar version of Firefox and a similar version of GNOME. Um, so, so to me, it's 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 a very not only a, a reasonable goal, but a, but a sort of a very good one. Um, I think releasing simultaneously is not going to work because. You know, different distros have different philosophies about how they release. But freezing and that process of planning and choosing components and so on, is, it's, I think it's quite reasonable to get everybody to, to put their heads together. And having put their heads together, then ultimately to make the right decisions. At the moment, we don't even put our heads together. Uh, and my sense is that if we did get folks together and say, you know, what makes sense? What are, you, what are you likely to do in October? What are we likely to do in October? Okay, well, we were planning to do this for these reasons. Okay, we could do that too. And... Uh, that kind of conversation would be very productive and, and, and I, I don't, I'm fairly sure that we'll get something good going. <laughs>